Welcome to Finding Your Sexiness podcast. And today I have with me Zarathustra. Uh, so Zarathustra is a, um, I don't know how to describe you. You're a healer. You have a special connection to divine. You activate people. I think you kind of have to tell your story and, and describe what it is that you do. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me here. And hello to all of your audience from all over the world. Um, well, which part of it? There's so many different aspects of it. There's okay, so you, you do energy healing on people, but it's more, you do activations. Uh, yeah, it's like creating the space, as you know, that you're a master of it, of uh, when you open the portal by creating the space, whether we're doing some active meditations or we just sit in silence or, or there's some music. And so automatically the vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency and, and then everything becomes possible. And uh, the activations happen, uh, healing happen, and people start to uh, sort of lose a lot of the old patterns as their vibration rising to a higher frequency. I call it the fifth dimensional vibrational frequency. A lot of st things, stuff that we're carrying, whether it's in the body or it's in the cellular memory of the body, as the vibration starts to rise in the n higher frequency, those stuff, those patterns that we're carrying do not exist. So they disappear. And, and you're saying things like if somebody's got bad health or emotional issues or even like a lack of finances, that that's in our energy, it's in our body? Uh, lack of finances, that's an interesting thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we, when we change from within, as of course, I'm preaching to the <laughs> choir, um, as we're changing within ourselves, uh, and we're vibrating into a higher frequency, more, more light and information in the form of light starts to settle in and things change naturally because uh, we become someone else. Let's say I use myself as an example. So if I'm vibrating in this higher frequency, so I'm someone else and naturally my reality will change. So it will affect all the aspects of life, whether I lose some uh, emotional blockages or my psychic changes or my finances changes, all of a sudden the energy is flowing and existence begins to offer things. So if we can get into this higher state of vibration, a life is just easier. Finances flow to us easier, our health is more vibrant. Is that what you're saying? Well. Um, potentially, yes. I mean, it's possible. I don't want someone come and tell me that, oh, I really increased my vibrations to a higher frequency, but I'm still broke. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a fake. But the, the thing is, when you're vibrating from a higher frequency, uh, you naturally fall into the presence. You naturally fall into this place of calmness and inner peace and trusting existence, trusting life that all is well and everything that you need will be provided because now you're much more connected to the source than vibrating from a lower frequency that you are trying to figure everything out with your thoughts and its concepts. But now you're really feeling the divine presence in your own heart. So there is a stronger connection. As a result of that, it calms you down and it brings you into this place of trust. And when you're surrendered and you're accepting what is, even though if your finances are not that well, but you're in this state of acceptance. And somehow existence through its mystery starts to reward you. Rewarding you because you're trusting life. And I've been talking about finding your sexiness, about how sexiness comes from within, that it is this kind of more successful, higher vibration. What do you, what do you think is sexy? Yeah, well, um, well, I think a lot of things are sexy. <laughs> but uh, yes, sexiness comes from within, and it basically comes from developing of loving yourself and accepting yourself and, and uh, trusting your intuition and really doing 
uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't dare dressing the way I dress or before I started what I'm doing. There was a lot of thoughts like, what would people think about me? And I'm too outrageous. I'm too out there. It's too woo-woo, you know, with what I'm teaching and the way I dress. Well, it's funny because we had Jimmy Church here a few minutes ago, our previous guest, and he saw you walking in and he was like, now that is sexy. And okay. how does he get that charisma? And, and that's what we're talking about. I mean, you're showing it from the inside out, but you're, right. you're changing your appearance as well. And, you know, people look at you, men and women, and say, wow, he's got charisma. Uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anytime I receive a compliment like this from a gorgeous, sexy woman like you, I'll take it in. Um, the, I, I feel like it really has to do with expressing yourself and being comfortable and having the confidence of just saying, this is who I am. I can't be somebody else. And, uh, and also, I love fashion. I like colors. Fashion is a form of expression for me to express my creativity. And so I decorate myself. <laughs> and uh, also, I take pride in taking care of my body, uh, cleansing, exercising, all the stuff, because I, I like to look good. And uh, there's, you know. I love in your, in your workshops, I've seen you do this Mickey Mouse, make everybody do this Mickey Mouse voice. And you get them all going, I love myself. I love myself. And you're encouraging everybody in a very fun way to love themselves. Yeah. What is that all about? You know, it actually uh, came to me a, a long time ago going to uh, another gentleman's mm. course and uh, mm. workshop. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he was doing some self-love affirmations. And uh, I realized, wow, this the self-love affirmations, they change the vibrations of the room very quickly. So slowly I started to develop my own thing with uh, I love myself, I love everybody. I fr and uh, then I realized, okay, a big part of loving yourself is you have to also forgive yourself because a lot of us have brought up in these cultures of shame and guilt and fear, and especially if it's connected to our sexuality. Yes. And so I, I realized that, okay, uh, it's just saying to myself like a robot, I love myself is not enough. And okay, I need to also forgive myself. And then I need to love others and forgive everybody else. But I need to also go one step beyond that is I have to really feel the divine presence uh, in myself. And so it leads me to realize that I'm whole and I'm complete. And loving myself means that I'm not just loving the good part of myself. I also love my dark side because I carry both. Exactly. I, I, we all carry a dark we side. We all carry. We cannot be total. Uh, so... And so if I love my good parts and I love my dark parts, then I can be complete and eventually I can transcend and go beyond good, good, good and bad. But this realization that I'm my number one enemy and uh, because there is no department of ugliness. Uh, that there's no governmental department of sending you a letter every every week saying that you're ugly, you're fat, you're unattractive, you're not sexy. I'm the only one who says that to myself. So if I realize that I'm an expression of the absolute, and and this is how God wants me to be, this is how existence wants me to be, and I can't be anything else. You know, I can't change my height. Um, I, uh, you know, well, nowadays with uh, technology, you can change your sex or whatever. But, but ultimately, this is who I am, the way I am. Yes. And if I accept myself the way I am, then love comes. And, uh, and that changes everything. <laughs> so I developed these affirmations. And, uh, and then as I was going forward, I realized, why don't we make it more fun? Like when you're saying it in a Mickey Mouse language, it automatically brings this joy within yourself. I and love myself. I love myself. I forgive myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it got developed. And it's, it's very interesting because 
I travel, I go to Europe a lot. And, uh, and you know, just like you, you meet a lot of people. And, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of uh, expos around the U.S. Mm -hmm. mostly, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and you meet a lot of people. And consequently, you don't always remember what they look like or what happened or how, what kind of um, effect you've had on them. Because I do hear from a lot of people about you that they came to one of your events and uh, whether it was a, um, a past life regression or way, whatever you were doing, it yes. was the theme of, and, and you told them something or you brought them to a place of realization and their lives changed. And I hear that about you, how oh, wonderful you. you are. Thank you. And, uh, and your audience should know <laughs> that, that you're high end, uh, <laughs> top shelf, high class. And, uh, and, uh, so I run into people here and there, and I don't know who they are, and they walk up to me. I'm sitting in a restaurant eating, and someone comes and says, excuse me, I don't want to bother you, but I just want to share this with you. I want to tell you thank you. I go, uh, for what? He says, because I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and every day that I wake up in the morning, I go, I go to the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I tell myself, I love myself in a Mickey Mouse fashion. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my, my day changes. <laughs> so that brings a lot of joy for me. And I, it makes me realize that a very simple thing such as that, in a way, it's kind of silly. Yes. But it's simple. It really can change someone's life. Oh. So how did you start doing this? I mean, did, were you born like this? Was this like a sudden awakening that you had? I, I, now that I look back, I, I had it from childhood. It was always there. And, uh, but of course, like anything, it started to cultivate and slowly, slowly would awaken and come out. And uh, as far as the healing part goes, that I had a very uh, profound dream when I was 21 years old. It's a long story. You heard it before. And uh, another thing happened is uh, a few years after that, I came across this incredible healer named Adele Tinnings. And this beautiful 80-year-old Caucasian lady in San Diego with white hair and beautiful, gorgeous blue eyes, green eyes such as yourself, and light was pouring out of her. And, uh, and she blessed me, and she gave me a carte blanche to hang out with her. Unfortunately, I didn't have the awareness to, I didn't recognize I came across an avatar. She was really uh, blessed, she was awakened, and she had a lot of spiritual powers. But I think uh, that short period of time that I was uh, honored to be around her, it, it had a profound effect on me. And also, it sort of awakened something in, inside me as far as this uh, desire for self-realization, this desire for union with God, and, and um, um, kind of understanding, like, why am I here? What am I doing on this planet? Um, I, I don't think I'm just here to uh, make money and make babies and, mm. and live 60, 70 years old and then die or accumulate as much um, uh, properties and, and worldly stuff. Uh, as you know, it's just not just about that. There is a deeper meaning to life than that. So my seeking years began ar around that time. I was about 29 years old. And uh, I got to a point I realized that um, I was dissatisfied with the books I was reading and, and different areas of spirituality I was poking in. I was in the spiritual market, checking out Buddhism, <laughs> Islam, mm. Sufism, looking into different uh, 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 aspects of spirituality, Christian uh, mysticism or Kabbalah or things like that. And nothing was really giving me a satisfying answer. Uh, somehow through the grace of God, I uh, ended up into India and I uh, landed at the feet of my uh, guru teacher. His name is uh, Punjaji, Papaji. And he got me introduced to Advaita Vedanta teachings, which is the teachings of non-duality. And I felt a strong resonance with these teachings. It was like, because I always felt like I was a very lazy, 
a spiritual seeker. And the thought of, oh, I have to get up at four in the morning and, and uh, sit uh, uh, in, uh, in a monastery in, in Tibet or somewhere like that or India and do meditation or do kundalini or dynamic meditation, Osho stuff at that time in the morning. Or I have to be <laughs> fasting or I have to give up meat. And I thought, okay, I can do all those things, but I have to give up sex. <laughs> and, and how am I going to do that? Because it's one of my favorite sports. And, uh, and I don't think I can give that one up. And I come across this beautiful enlightened master. And the first thing he says on the first day that I sit in front of him, he says, there is nowhere to go and nothing to do. You are already that which you're looking for. And I was like, what? There's nowhere to go and nothing to do. Means I don't have to give up meat and I don't have to give up sex and I don't have to give up dressing sexy and all these things. Not have to shave my head or look like a monk. No, you don't have to. And I go, well, this is my teacher. And uh, because this is the lazy man's way to enlightenment and it works for me. So I was very drawn to it. And of course, it took another 20 years, 25 years of, of really understanding what he was teaching. Uh, but I was drawn to that. And, you know, so in a nutshell, uh, this is how I got pulled into this aspect and this path. And then you had like a download. Yeah, the major download happened in 2009 when uh, these so-called entities, beings, started to whisper in my ear and they were telling me they're my fifth dimensional guides and wanted me to go print out the business card and announce myself as a fifth dimensional quantum healer. And, uh, and I had tremendous resistance to it because what the hell is fifth dimension <laughs> or quantum healer, less alone to go make a business card and announce myself. I'm not going to make a fool out of myself. <laughs> and uh, the voices started to get more intense and constant. And as you know, when you enter, when they choose you and they want to bring you in, they start to uh, dry out any other avenues that you can make a living. You know, everything, every other door gets shut down and you get forced to go in this path. And not necessarily it's going to be easy and right away you're going to make a living or everything's going to be fine and you're going to be successful. You know, entering into this path has its own obstacles and, and uh, challenges that you have to go through. But that's what, what was happening. It was like, no, you are to be doing this. And uh, so I was like, what is fifth dimension or quantum healing? They said, okay, go on the internet and research it. So I go on the internet and put fifth dimensional quantum healing <laughs> and there's nothing. So I say, well, there's no fifth dimensional quantum healing. And they say, well, we know because you're going to create it. <laughs> so I study about fifth dimension quantum, quantum healing and things starts to slowly make sense and I put it together and finally I make a business card and I gather my courage to walk out in the world and announce to the world that I'm a fifth dimensional quantum healer. And then slowly the activation came after that. And I've seen you work with big groups. Do you like to work with big groups rather than one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. I'm, I, basically, I feel like I'm designed. Uh, my design, mm. this model is created in the world to be working with masses and big groups. And I get a lot of energy from it. And, uh, and, I, and then a, a lot of energy starts to come out of me. And people, people come to you, they've got maybe relationship issues or they've got, uh, you know, career, financial stuff, all, all different kinds of problems, issues. Most of people who come to me, because I don't do psychotherapy, mm -hmm. okay, so I don't deal with past stuff or doing therapy or gen in generally, I, I don't do that. 
I don't do that kind of work. Generally, what I do is I work with them and raising their vibrations to a higher frequency. So you don't care about their story, their their stuff. Not, no, I may listen to the story, but I it's not my forte. It's not something that attracts me. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just. As you know, we all find our niche yeah. of where is it, where is my strength, and where is it that really feeds me, and I feel really good about it, you know? So I had to look at it to see if I want to deal with the story and do psychotherapy, even though I studied psychology, or I just want to deal with raising vibrations to a higher frequency and bypass all of that, okay? So... Um, uh, as a result of that, uh, most people come to me are, they may have emotional issues, blockages, damages, and things happen to them, or psycholo psychological stuff, or they're looking for awakening and, and being more connected, or there's physical stuff. So, uh, which basically I deal with all of it with one formula. All of it is if... I'm capable, if I can help someone to uh, become quiet, because I discovered that the more your mind is quiet, the more you're in this place that you're not thinking, you're just here in this present moment, but you're not involved with your mental process. I, I realized that something gets activated. There's a grid awakens, and automatically the vibration of the person starts to change. And these issues they're dealing with starts to dissipate and disappear. Now, the question is, can they uh, sustain this higher frequency, which I'm sure you have encountered this with a lot of your people. Yeah, sometimes they'll get better, things will happen, they'll be great, and then mm, a few days later they're back to they, where they were. Yeah, they regress, they yeah. fall, fall down. And uh, when you are with them, they're in your presence, you're working with them, all of a sudden all their issues disappear. And that seems like the common uh, issue and challenge that most spiritual seekers have. Uh, when they're with a guru, with their spiritual leader, everything disappears and they feel fantastic. And then when you're not around, they fall back into their old patterns. And uh, so what I realized is, can I train them? Can I teach them and, and introduce them to a system that they can maintain and sustain this higher frequency uh, level? And if they can, then the change in their psyche or emotions or their body is going to be permanent and long term. So this is what you concentrate on in workshops is to train people how to be able to do this themselves? Y yes. And keep yes. it. And I'm kind of lately in past few months has been kind of deviated from doing a lot of hands-on healing. I still do it. It's a part of uh, uh, my makeup, but I'm more into giving spiritual talks and, and spiritual transmission and uh, more into helping people to find their inner peace through becoming quiet and, and the presence of just being, being here and kind of uh, uh, training them to detach themselves from anything has happened in the past to this moment and any stories, future projections that we have. And I realized that the more I'm able to bring someone in this moment, automatically change happen and healing happens. So I don't know if you can do this, but is there anything you could give us a quick snippet for people at home? Is there anything you could, you know, say, talk to give us a little for the people at home to see if we can raise their vibration a little bit? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually it's very, very simple is basically what I realized. This is what happened to me. And I realized that all my life I've been. Let, let's say, for example, hypothetically, I mean, people, you don't have to agree with me or disagree with me, but let's say our thoughts and our emotions are objects. And, uh, of course, we're, we associate our thoughts with our head. So we think thoughts are happening here and emotions, we're, we feel like it's happening inside our bodies. Yes. Uh, well, let's say that's the case, hypothetically. And... And let's, if we agree that our thoughts are objects, 
And because they're passing through, they're, the stream of thoughts, it's maybe constant or not, but they're not always there. And we're not always thinking about the same thing. So the thoughts are passing through. But, but we're aware of our thoughts. And especially when we're doing conscious work, we start to become more aware of, of what is going on in our head. And consequently, sometimes we come and say, or people tell me, like, Zarathustra, my mind is going crazy. Can you do something about it? Or people come and tell me that I have a lot of fear or anxiety and I'm suffering from it. So these are emotions that, that we're dealing with. So what the quick thing... Uh, an easy way of uh, helping somebody is can you bring your attention from your thoughts through where you are observing your thoughts from where you're witnessing or noticing or aware you are aware of your thoughts I'm not talking about changing your thoughts manipulating the thoughts positive visualization or positive thinking I'm just talking about diverting our attention from the thoughts or the emotions into where they're being noticed. From where am I noticing my thoughts and emotions? And almost immediately, if I bring my attention to the source of I am, from where I can notice these things, all of a sudden it all disappears. And all of a sudden the heart opens up. It's almost immediate. It's amazing. It's very profound. The so if people at home listening to this, if they're thinking about their thoughts, you want them to focus on how they're noticing. Yeah, the one who notices the thoughts, not the thoughts. Who, so the thoughts are not ours. We don't own them. They're kind of passing by they're us. They're passing by us all the time. They're not ours. That's why so many times you may be in a room you may just say, oh, you know what? I really feel like I want to have a cup of coffee. And four other people say, I was thinking about the same thing. So the thoughts are passing, passing through, and we got these antennas that we're picking them up. Because the thing is, if you were your thoughts, let's say, let's say it's true. Well, then how do you know you're thinking? Because thinking is the only thing you would ever know. So how can you say, my, my mind is driving me crazy? So you are the observer looking at the thoughts, the uh, thoughts are separate. Absolutely, you've been doing it all your life. And does that help you when you've got negative thoughts? It doesn't matter, ne negative thoughts, positive thoughts, they're the same thing. They're different sides of the same coin. They're, it's still thoughts. And how does that help you then to get to that place of releasing issues that you've got by noticing that you're not your thoughts? Right, because the moment you're diverting your attention to the source, there's silence. And that's what you're looking for, silence. Yeah, because, because if you're not thinking, then what is the problem that you're trying to deal with? Like, okay, I was a, ch I was a kid and I got abused, right? So I keep thinking about this issue. Right? Yes. It keeps coming up for me. Yes. But if I'm but if my memory is blank, so where is the issue? The issue disappears. And when people realize that the thoughts are not them, they're just passing by and they're noticing that and they get into that stillness. Yes. Then they can start to heal and not re re, re, re keep thinking about it and recreating this issue that they have. The the stillness becomes the healer because you're in this moment and then you get connected to the moment because you're always in this moment. You can never be anywhere else outside of this moment. I mean, physically, you can, geographically, you can move around, but you're always here. So if you come to here and you realize here, right now, it's very quiet, so the grid gets activated. Because the presence comes in, your vibration starts to change, and you have migrated from the head to the heart. So all of a sudden, your heart starts to open, and you start to feel the flow of the bliss. And when your heart opens and you feel the bliss, that's your yeah, sexiness. Yeah, you feel the bliss and your sexiness. Yeah, you feel <laughs> the juices. Your juices are flowing. 
and now you're actually drinking from the nectar of yourself it's the love that is inside you the bliss that it's inside you it's the presence of the divine every breath I take is the indication that Her Majesty the Supreme is here within me otherwise I wouldn't be able to breathe for a moment if it was in the presence of God so if I recognize it that it's existing within myself then all of a sudden everything else goes away so Wonderful. that's what I have to <laughs> so if somebody's interested in finding out more learning learning this technique working with you they if they come on my website it's uh, zaratustra.tv and they can find out more about me and what I do and and the programs that I have to offer wonderful wonderful yeah. thank, thank you thank you for thank you for you. having me